Can you imagine if Tinkercad were capable of doing something like this in a 3D model? Oh, wait. I'm not going to show you how to model this CAT60 during the course of this video, but I am going to show you a technique that I used frequently while modeling it. Sit back and get ready to have your Tinkercad skills expanded. I would imagine most of us have created a brick wall in Tinkercad by creating a planar surface that represents the mortar and then creating a bunch of cubes or duplicating a bunch of cubes into a brick pattern. Now, this gives you very little variation and makes a very boring brick wall. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you another way to do it that's faster, easier, and gives you much better results. This tutorial is going to require a, an open source free software called Inkscape, which you can obtain at inkscape.org. Just go to their website. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see a button that says download now. Simply click that button and it should bring up the version that you need to download for your operating system. Go ahead and download that and install Inkscape. We're going to use this software frequently throughout my tutorials. The next step is to select a pattern from Google. So we're going to do an image search and here I'm searching for brick seamless texture. And then I'll click on the images so I can search Google images. I'll click on tools and select color as black and white. So I get black and white images only. Then I can search down through the various images that it presents and look for a good brick pattern that I want to use. It could be stone, it could be brick, any kind of pattern basically can be used. So I'll click on the thumbnail and then go over to the right hand pane and right click. Go ahead and open up Inkscape and from the edit menu choose paste and let's paste the raster image that we copied off Google into Inkscape. Make sure the image is selected and go to the path menu and select trace bitmap. And the trace bitmap tool comes up, click update, and you can see a preview of the pattern. From there, if it looks good, simply click apply and it creates a vector version of the raster image that you pasted in. You can drag that away from the raster image Select the raster image and delete it. Then go to the file menu, file, save as, and just save it as an SVG somewhere where you can find it. So now that we have our SVG file saved, we'll go ahead back into Tinkercad. In the upper right hand corner, select import, and then choose a file and browse to the file that you created, the SVG file we created in the last step. And then select art. Now, if you select artboard, if you watch the dimensions in the lower part of this dialog box, if you select artboard, it's going to bring in a larger area of the SVG. We really only want the art, so we'll select art and then click the import button. And it takes just a bit to get it imported. In the meantime, I'm going to drop a cube in to the work plane here. 
So it's imported our pattern. I'm going to adjust that cube to be three inches high because I want to be able to scale this brick pattern to a somewhat realistic scale. So I'm going to go to the top view and turn off perspective and I'll move that flattened cube over into a brick space. Just a little over scale, as you can see. So I'll select the brick pattern object and using the using the corner carrot I will shift drag to scale it uniformly and I'll just keep scaling it until I feel like the bricks in the pattern are about three inches high and that looks pretty good right there so I'll delete that flattened cube now I will select my brick pattern I want to set the height on this to, to one millimeter. There we go, one millimeter. <laughs> now I'm going to drag another cube in to the work plane. I'm going to set the length and width dimensions the same as my pattern. So I'm going to just pull the pattern and enter the length dimension to expand the cube and then again pull it to see what the width is and I will enter that width dimension to the cube the idea being I end up with a cube that's got the same XY dimensions as my pattern then I'll set the Z dimension of the cube to two millimeters Use the work plane tool to set the work plane to the top of the cube. Select my pattern and hit the D key, which drops it to work plane level. Now I'm going to go ahead and align these two. So I will select both objects. Use the alignment tool. I'll select the flattened cube once again and then click the circular carrots to align everything. At this point, they're stacked right on top of each other. I'm going to select the pattern again and push it down into the surface of the flattened cube. I'll set it to minus 0.5. Then I'm going to set the pattern to a whole object. Now I'm going to select both objects and use group to group them together. It takes Tinkercad just a bit to do that. Now you can see I have a brick pattern that's got variance in it. It's more interesting to look at than just the plain blocks on a flat surface. Now we have our pattern created in Tinkercad. It'd be nice to be able to reuse this. So if we go to the shapes library and select your creations and with our pattern selected, we click create shape. We can go ahead and enter a name like brick texture for our shape. And it's going to show us a preview of the shape. Now all we do is click Save Shape. And Tinkercad's going to place that in our Creations Shape Library. So we can reuse it as many times as we want. We just drag it out of the Shapes Library and into our model. I've used this technique to do many things on my model railroad. Here are a few photographic examples of things that I've done. The rock work on this foundation was done in this way. The brick work on the foundation for the hotel in Compchi was done this way. It's a really handy technique. So I hope today that this has been useful to you. Uh, I hope that you use this technique frequently and 
This is Scott Forbes saying, until the next video, happy modeling.